That was marvelous right there. That was marvelous. Welcome to the very first episode of Seminole Night Life. <laughs> this is a brand new student-operated variety show produced by students in the media production program. Give it up for them. This took a lot of hard work. A lot of things had to come together. Absolutely marvelous, marvelous. I... I am your host this evening, Aristotle. Now, a lot of other talk show hosts say they have fantastic shows, but tonight, I'm telling you the truth, we have the best show! <laughs> All right. Tonight we have a cappella group, All Night Yahtzee. <laughs> the 30 and 60 comedy troupe. <laughs> The Fine Print Jazz Ensemble. And Florida State Professor Mark Ziegler. Marvelous show indeed, indeed. So um, I don't know about you, but I'm having a very difficult time sleeping these days. Very difficult time. Uh, they just installed one of these chirping crosswalks by my house. <laughs> yes, you know these. So all night, every night, every seven minutes. This is all I hear, right here. Okay, and I have nothing against people that are blind that need to get across the street, okay? I voted yes on that amendment. But what concerns me is to think, like what deranged party animal blind people are walking around my neighborhood at 4.30 in the morning? <laughs> I have this horrible image, it's like these golem creatures just walking around, you know, looking for the party, you know, just, I need to get to the party! I need to get there! All of a sudden they hear the crosswalk. <laughs> the crosswalk will take me to the precious party! It will take me there! It's a completely irrational fear to have. <laughs> but I have it. I don't, I don't understand it myself. So, uh, who likes impressions out here? Yeah. That's good, that's good. Um, I have an impression for you. This is a guy that uses senior high school photo poses to make things less awkward after using very sexually charged pickup lines in a club. <clears throat> hey, you know it'd look good on you? Me. <laughs> A lot less awkward, right? Right? I even got something to show for it. It's a rag. <laughs> thought it was going to be more exciting. Guess not. <laughs> Guess not. Whatever. Whatever. Um, you may not have heard this. This happened in the news today. Uh, this is a very uh, chilling tale. SpaghettiOs is having a recall on some cans put on shelves in 2008. A spokesperson for the company had this to say. Uh-oh. <laughs> SpaghettiOs. <laughs> for our jazz ensemble, Fine Print. Bye. 
music in my ears. <laughs> All right, our next group is a cappella, and if you don't know what that is, you're about to find out. <laughs> Give it up for All Night Yahtzee. <laughs> So paper thin, like a house of cards, one blow from caving in. Do you ever feel already buried deep? Six feet under screams when no one seems to hear a thing. Do you know that there's still a chance for you? Cause there's a spark in you. You just gotta ignite the light and let it shine. Just a a waste of space your original cannot be replaced if you only knew what the future holds after a hurricane comes a rainbow maybe your reasons why all the doors are closed so you could open one that leads you to the perfect road like a lightning bolt your heart will glow and when it's time you'll know you just gotta ignite the light and it shine just so Eat, sleep, and breathe that you're full of the stuff. Go back and tie it up tight. Wheat, meat, dairy free tea, toes so happy, clappy, high on life. You should try it, but you know. Go on when no one's looking. No! Yeah. No. 
la 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 Most and everything, it's so charming, very charming. We'll rock and play the full no until it is and put the deepest whispering trust in you. No one saw it coming. Oh. All right, I'm not sure that you can start a show off better than that, right? Am I right? Yes. yes. All right. For more on upcoming performances, you can visit allnightyahtzee.com. Go ahead and check that out. Please, please, I definitely would like you to check that out. All right. Now, we have a very special part of the show. This is 30 and 60 coming out to perform for you. They are a sketch comedy troupe known for performing 30 skits in 60 minutes, making it a race against the clock. Today, they're going to be doing an abbreviated version of their normal routine. It'll be six skits in 13 minutes. Now, I don't know about you, I don't think they're going to get it. <laughs> don't think it's going to get done. All right, guys, you ready for this? All right, here we go. Give it up for 3060! <laughs> It's FSU's acapella night. I know you guys are excited. My name's Socrates. What is that up with, like, what's up with these blind people everywhere? No, just kidding. Oh my god. Just kidding. All right, we're gonna bring out our first group. It's our co-ed acapella group. All day Monopoly. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> You guys will see what I mean, all right? You guys ready? You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. A five, a six, a five, six, 
I said, oh, we're a diva band, we're here to say We like to sing songs every day Watch us as we dance and sing You're gonna love how we do our thing Bring it down, boys! Oh, yo, yo, hey, check it out Oh, 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 trying to get a date for prom. I worry about my stepmother. She's a goat. This is true life. My stepmother's a goat. <laughs> a lot of people worry about, you know, going to school, and it's even worse when you have a stepmother that's a goat. <laughs> Come on, I have to, I'm gonna be late for school. Let's go, get in the car. God, you always make me late. You're always making me late. I'm gonna put some music on. <laughs> Stop singing fireworks. <laughs> Thanks a lot. What's even worse is when I, when I have to go to a parent-teacher conference. Dad, you have to come. Hey, I just can't, all right? But Dad, you know what? It's all right. Your mom will go, okay? Uh -huh. She's my stepmom. <laughs> Hello, Frankie. Hi, Mr. Kabapal. I asked you to bring your parents. This Who is this? <laughs> well, if that's the case, Mrs. Rosado, this is an F. Frankie is failing this class. <laughs> Frankie, <laughs> next time bring your real mom. Uh. <laughs> <Crap>. <laughs> What's even worse is when I have to bring a date home. Yeah. Are you sure you want to do this? Oh, totally. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Dad? This is Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> so nice to meet you. This is my mom. Really nice to meet. Oh. <laughs> Careful, she bites. <laughs> Scene. for today, and I got a bad headache, so if there's no more questions, we can head on out of here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> when you were going over the vocabulary earlier, I'm not sure everyone understood irony okay. as the vocab word, so could you just like go over that again, maybe? Sure, Blaine. You know what's ironic that you said that, because now I'm going to have to kick your teeth in after class. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if there's no more questions, we can get this train moving. Mm. <laughs> yes, Blaine? Mm. The assignment that you posted last week, I haven't done it yet because I had a family emergency. Everyone's okay. <laughs> um, I was wondering if I could get an extension on that. Sure, Blaine, you can get an extension. Yay. Okay. Are we good? We're all good? Yes. We can head out? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Blaine! While you're doing vocabulary, while you're at it, um, do you think you could go over the word euphemism because you erased part of it a little bit over there and I can't see? <laughs> It'd be a euphemism if I said I was going to clean your clock for keeping us late. <laughs> All right, boys, girls, Blaine, we ready? We can go on up. Okay, Blaine, yes, your question. At the beginning of class, you wrote down some vocab and then you erased it really quickly. Could you write it again so I can finish writing it down? Are you happy, Blaine? Where'd Blaine go? He just got up and left. How rude. <laughs> Let's go. Scene, where is he now? Welcome. 
welcome back to Where Are They Now? Today we're going to take a look and see what happened to Gollum after Lord of the Rings. Well, because of the recession, he had to get a job at Burger King. <laughs> uh, welcome to Burger King. How may I help you? <laughs> okay, how you doing, buddy? Uh, can I get a Whopper with some onion rings, please? Yes, yes, you may. <laughs> <laughs> onion rings. Precious onion rings. <laughs> Precious! They're so precious! No, what the heck? What are you doing? What? I told you no, not what? to touch the no, onion rings! You're fired! Get out of oh, here! Oh, I need this job! Come on, get out! Next, he got a job as a nail technician at a nail salon. Hello, welcome to the nail salon. Hi, I just need a French, please. Yes. But first, we need to take off this precious no, little ring. No, you never take that off. We need this precious little ring. I told you, stop touching what? the customers like uh, that. I hate you. You're fired. <laughs> and finally, he found his dream career working at the ring pop factory. Oh, <laughs> precious ring pops, strawberry ring pop, and grape ring pop, and or no. I don't like orange green pop. <laughs> no, I don't like it. I, I don't like orange green. But I like grape seam. <laughs> Batman and Frat Boy. I said later. Let me get my drink on. Just be quiet. I'm trying to do something right now, right? Hey, Fat Boy. Jeez. Hello, Batman. Catwoman. I saw you lurking around my cat lair. Oh. So now I have you in the cat chains. Yeah. Oh. Stay out of my cat lair. I'm going to okay. go sharpen my talons to kill you. All right. All right. Only one person that can get me out of here. Frat boy. All right, bat phone, face. <laughs> Call frat boy. Oh my gosh, that's it, Batman's my Look, hey, Batman. Batman. Look, just give me a Hi. second. Uh, hey, what's up, Batman? Frat boy? Yeah, what's up, man? All right, I need you to rescue hold, me. Hold on one second. Just go ahead, just go. I'll meet you there, okay? We'll go just go with ahead. You. Frat boy? Yeah, what's up, Batman? I'm in the cat lair. The cat lair? The, the cat, cat lair. Inside a new club, we should totally no. go there. No, it's not a club. I'll meet you at the club later, all right? I gotta go, all right? I'll be what? there in a second, That's... Batman. All right. What's up, Batman? <laughs> Frat boy, can you- One, one second. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Batman? Can you please cut me from the cat chains? Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Catwoman. Who's this chick? <laughs> it's Catwoman. Catwoman. Now prepare to die. All right. Uh, you can't do anything, can you? Frat boy, save me. He can't do anything. Me, uh. Pots in five minutes. You want to go to Pot Billy's tonight? Let's go to Pots. Let's go, Ben. <laughs> All in a day's work for Batman and Frat Boy. See <laughs> Jamie Oates Retirement Home. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Shady Oaks Retirement Home Broadway Review. My name's Muriel, and I'll be your master of ceremonies. Uh, first, we've got Gladys. She'll be singing the classic song and all that jazz from the musical in Chicago. <laughs> Come on in, why don't we paint the town? <laughs> Great. 
tell them how I am defying gravity. I'm flying high, defying gravity. And you all bring me down, bring me down. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> And 60. Give it up for them, guys. They were meant. Remember, you can see 30 and 60 perform at plenty of venues around FSU in the Tallahassee area. Their next performance is April 25th at 7 p.m. at the Fine Arts Annex. But make sure that you find them on Facebook for regular updates. <laughs> All right, now. We have heard of the most interesting man in the world, right? Am I right? You've heard of him? Yeah. Okay, he's the Spanish guy. Well, tonight I'm here to present the most important person. There we go, guys. Roll footage, please. Roll footage. He once taught a cat persuasive speech just to see if he could. Students don't skip his class. They skip to his class, early. He can hold a conversation with just his eyes. He never went to college. College went to him. He is the most important person. I don't watch TV. When I do, I watch Seminole Nightlife. And here he is, folks, Professor Mark Ziegler! And joining him is Will Boyce. And Maxine Murray, who will be... ...grilling him with questions only a man of his stature can answer. I need to get out more, bud. <laughs> Guess so. All right, let's start this off. I'll start. Um, can you tell us how you ended up at Florida State University? Yeah, I ended up at Florida State. I had, uh, as many of you know, I'd been at another institution uh, that will go nameless. <laughs> and there was a uh, senior professor of higher ed at Florida State. Her name was Dr. Melvin Hardy, and she somehow contacted my dean of students down at Stetson. And so this Dr. Hardy lady, she was about 75 at the time, weighed about 90 pounds, soaking wet, wore gold go-go boots, stretch <laughs> pants, cow neck sweaters, had purple hair. She was a, you know, an unbelievable lady. She was not only a senior professor of education, but also a farmer in Valdosta. Twice named Georgia Man of the Year for farming. True story. <laughs> and she called me and she said, I heard things did not go well at the University of Florida. And I said, little does. And she said, uh, 
she said, well, I've got a fellowship for you if you'd like to come up here and work for Dr. Bob Leach and Dr. Bob Kimmel. What the heck? I wasn't doing anything that day, so I ended up at Florida State. And she kind of took me up under her wing, and here I am uh, 73 years later. So it's been, <laughs> been very impressive, yeah. So it's Dr. Hardy who's responsible for it all, yeah. So how did, it, how did it come to pass that you knew you wanted to teach for a living or, I, uh, or, or just to talk professionally? I, I didn't know that. I really, I majored in the sciences. And uh, it's a crazy story, but it's, uh, I'm finishing up my master's degree, William, and uh, got a call, John Payne, School of Communication. He's now retired. And he called me one night. It was the end of the first week of classes. And he says, uh, are you Mark? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, uh, have you ever... Uh, taught a public speaking class? And I said, no, sir. I wasn't even in the communication department. He said, have you ever taken a public speaking class? And I said, no, sir. He said, well, we're, uh, what the hell, we're one faculty member short, can you teach tomorrow? <laughs> True, and so at eight o'clock the next morning, I went and met a class that uh, had met for two days that week without a teacher. And I got there about quarter of eight, had a very holy pair of blue jeans on and tie-dye t-shirt, Chuck Taylor high top Converse tennis shoes. And I sat by this young guy at the back who had his head down, he was drooling and the class began to filter in. And uh, sure enough, at five minutes after eight, one of the, one of the frat guys stood up kind of like this. <laughs> He stood up and he said, well, I guess we have no teacher. And I stood up on my desk in the back of the room, 124 Diffin Ball, and I said, not today because it looks like I'm gonna be your teacher. And it truly was the first time that everything was in alignment. I got in front of the class, I had no textbook, I had no idea what was going on. And I'm still in contact with about 75% of the students in that class. One of them is now in Congress, one of them's a judge, one of them is an author. Uh, just some really cool things happened. And it was that particular moment at the end of my master's degree when I, I wanted to do that and everything fell into place. I've been very fortunate. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Very cool. Okay, well the next question is, how did a public speaking become requirement at Florida State University? Okay, we're lucky because if that hadn't happened, I'd have been gone, all right? <laughs> in, in 95, I believe, the, uh, the accrediting board came in and they take a look at Florida State's programs and uh, they came through, looked at everything, we all look good, but they always make a recommendation. The last recommendation, Will, was uh, uh, the leadership stuff with Dr. Osteen. So in 95, the recommendation was everyone needs to take oral communication competency and meet that competency in order to be prepared for what might come along in the professional world. And I was very, very lucky because at the time I was in the dean's office and I had two very good friends, Dr. Marilyn Young, Professor Emeritus of Communication, and Dr. Donna Nudd, who were working very closely with the accreditation board and all of that. And they said, well, we think we have a person who could really help with this. And so kind of, they kind of signed me on, moved me from the dean's office into a full-time faculty position. And then I was very fortunate a couple years later for them to bring Dr. Misha Lawrence in to handle the other aspect of it. And it, it's grown. And again, my goal from the start was that it's not something that people would fear, but they would really look forward to taking their public speaking or fundamentals of speech class. Yes, sir, Aristotle. <laughs> Good question. Um, what is the most interesting persuasive speech that you have ever seen in your entire life? Uh, well, it's it really it, what the topic wasn't all that interesting, but I had a young man one time in London uh, get up and he started the speech with, uh, uh, I don't know how to say this, well, he said, Mr. Ziegler wants us to be com comfortable when we give our speeches. And he crawled up on the table, like head first, and he was in kind of a fetal position, and then he turned his legs over to the side and he goes, and I feel that this is how I am most comfortable. <laughs> and I looked at, there was a guy sitting next to me, and his name was Ted, and Ted just went under his breath. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to bite my lip to keep from laughing. I mean, there, I've had ones on persuading us to um, own a pig. I've had, you know, all kinds, of, all kinds of stuff over the years, but that one was, was truly one where I was really, really uncomfortable. <laughs> it was just all, it was terrible. I use it now as an example in class for how not to start a persuasive <laughs> Yeah. You, you said you just came back from New York City. I was uh, there this weekend. Yeah, to see. tell us about that and okay. some of the alumni you met. Yes, let me tell you about this, guys. Former student was in my class, uh, summer 2004. And I uh, heard through the grapevine that he had a Broadway play going up called Born Yesterday. So the preview started last week. I was able to get a ticket for cheap out of Tallahassee, $300. That's really good. Oh, that's Flew cheap. up. He didn't know I was coming. There I am at the stage door Thursday night above the sign. It says Born Yesterday starring Jim Belushi, Robert Sean Leonard, Nina Arianda, and the lead producer is Philip Morgaman, a 2006 graduate of the FSU School of Theater. He was in my class in 04. So after the 
thing. I go downstairs. I'm like, Philip, I think the show was pretty good. You know, he's like, what are you doing here? I said, you think we miss your, you know, another Broadway show of yours going up? He's 27, 28. Uh, have a former student who owns a place on the Upper East Side called the Yorkville Crapery and the bar next door called the Saloon where all the FSU alumni in, in New York City watch football games. So I went up and checked out his operation. Met with another former student from the fall of 95 who is now a uh, writer for Maxim and he does freelance writing and that's really, yeah, you'd like that, all right, so that's good. Had a former student ask me to go to brunch with her. She was in Hairspray on Broadway. So we met at this vegan place and I had my styrofoam French toast. That was very good. Um, I like meat and grease. And anyway, so she uh, got to meet her, her fiance and then they asked me to do their wedding up in New York, September 30th. So I had a, a lot of really good things happen. I had a, another former student whose partner is in the Book of Mormon. So I was able to see that. Went up on the stage of Book of Mormon, met Matthew Broderick and Ben Vereen right after the show, and that was Sunday night. So FSU is all over, they're all over that city doing great things. And so whenever I'm up there, I try to meet as many of the former students um, as I can. And it's just, it's really cool, really great. Cool, cool. Will, what's your uh, favorite Professor Ziegler moment? <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> well, he doesn't have many because he was never in my class. Right. We actually met when he was applying for a Fulbright. Yeah. Everyone should know, Will has gotten a Fulbright scholarship when we go into the University of Glasgow in the fall to work Ooh. on his master's degree. <laughs> we actually got into a quasi-heated discussion at one of the salons one time over a New York Times blog about gay marriage, and we actually had a meeting of the minds. We've had great discussions ever since. So, yeah. that. That's the yeah. only time we've really spent time together. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Until now, right? <laughs> right. Maxine from the University of Michigan, she's a graduate student in communication. Clap yeah. for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your favorite uh, Professor Ziegler moment. Let's hear it. Uh, well, he does do the music man in class. That's pretty awesome. But he has a story about this pipe that his father and him found. You should tell it. Yeah, I like it. I, my dad, yeah, it's not that kind of pipe. Yeah, that's um, wondering. <laughs> my dad did a lot with the civil rights struggle in the 60s. And in fact, we had FBI protection. My dad was a minister. Oh, wow. We had FBI protection during the 60s because the uh, Ku Klux Klan wanted to burn a cross in our yard. And so I grew up with my dad helping integrate the schools and with our getting in trouble because my best friend was an African-American young man named Willie and our deacons in our church didn't like that there in the 60s. And uh, so when I was about 12, we go up to uh, Perry, Florida, which is right south of here is where dad was raised. And he said he wanted to tell me how he was raised and how he'd had to overcome what he had been taught. So we go out into this old field in Boyd, right north of Perry, where there used to be a sawmill. Dad says, here's where we played football. And he said, now over there was grandma's, was your grandma's house, and that's where Mr. Lockridge lived, and that's where, he goes, you know what, go get the hoe out of the trunk. We always have a hoe and a shovel and all those things in our car, and white trash. <laughs> and so we went over, and he pulled out the hoe, and he started digging, and he pulled out this pipe, and it was this old, rusty pipe, and the ends of the pipe where you drink water out of it were serrated. And then Dad goes, you see that serrated edge there? And I said, yeah, and he goes, we got home from school one day, and there, that's where we used to drink our cold water when we were playing football. And a man had turned off the water and he was filing that pipe to have those sharp teeth on it. And I went up to the man and said, you know, Mr. So-and-so, that will hurt us. We could get cut on that. And he said, I don't care, boy. I'm trying to keep you safe because we're not going to have the black mouths on it. Oh, jeez. But he used the N-word. And so dad told me that that was how he was raised. And he intended to break that cycle with us. And certainly he did. And it was, it's, I call it intolerance. I've got it on my shelf. When dad died, a lot of the church people wanted his things. Can I have the Bible? Can I have the embroidery of Jesus? And I said, I want the pipe, you know, because that was a really important lesson of intolerance and hate. And it's a natural artifact that represents that. There you go. So that's important. Last question for you, sir. Tell me the best advice that you've ever given a student in less than 30 seconds. Okay. My best <laughs> advice, and this is with all communication. We are bombarded, Aristotle, every day with a bunch of crap. You can't park here. You have to take this class. You're off map. You, you, I'm breaking up with you. In every, in every communication, what I try to do is have as my intention to lighten the load. So if you come to me and say, Mr. Ziggler, I have this really big paper. I got to get the paper done. What I do is I say, let's sit down. Let's see what we got to do. Let's get this paper done. 
every interaction. If someone's at Wendy's and they're behind, just say, relax. I'll get the burger when I get the burger. Lighten the load. There's enough crap, and that's what we can do. There you go. Well, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Will, Maxine, and of course, <laughs> Professor Z, for sharing those anecdotes. Um, I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm a better person for listening to you. So <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you very much. Um, earlier this year, the media production program had several students recognized by the Broadcast Education Association. They had a feature-length script that took best of in the entire writing competition and two films that placed in the categories that were submitted for in the video competition. Dave Dorsey, who directed one of those films, had another film that we're going to show you. In 2010, it took best of in the entire video competition. It's called Inner Demon. And let me warn you folks, it's really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> what you're about to see is extremely creepy and disturbing, but it showcases utter brilliance. So folks, let's get it rolling back there, boys, huh?
remake of Inner Demon. So, uh, boys in the back, we're going to need you to go ahead and uh, play that for us. <laughs> to get that two and a half minute video. It took five hours of shooting. It was fun, it was fun. <laughs> All right guys, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling like I need some more acapella! It's here again for All Night Yachty!
been a fantastic show. Have you guys had a lot of fun out there? Thank you again and All Night Yahtzee for another fantastic a cappella performance. Make sure to keep an eye out for All Night Yahtzee around Florida State. And log on to Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter to check out their upcoming performances. You can also email them to say hey at allnightyahtzee at gmail.com. And also, give it up for fine print. that you have provided this evening. Please make sure to go out to the Hi-Fi Jazz Cafe every Saturday night from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. to watch them perform. Great job again, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all the people out there in TV land for tuning in to their first of many Seminole Nightlife episodes. We want to thank the comedy troupe, 30 and 60. <laughs> Thanks to all our guests. Mr. Z, where are you? I'm right here. Uh -huh. Here we are. <laughs> all right. and all thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> SNL and visit our Facebook page, Seminole Nightlife. Thanks again for coming out and good night! <laughs> <laughs>